welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information the troglies guitar show the big news that is sweeping the guitar nation is this airport customs office seizes 36 counterfeit guitars allegedly played by famous musicians Okay, so I keep getting sent this article, so I figured we would talk about it. I think this is being completely blown out of proportion simply to create awareness and try to get people to stop buying counterfeit guitars from China and to scare people who have always been thinking about ordering one of these things from ever wanting to buy it. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to read this article yourself. But basically, it just says the Customs Border Protection officers opened up some packages and they found some counterfeit goods, which totaled 36 counterfeit guitars at their Washington Dulles International Airport. Now, first off, I really hope that this does not come as a shock to anybody that counterfeit guitars come into the country every single day. And I highly doubt that custom agents always take them out, take nice photos of them, and start posting them online. I think what makes this particular shipment interesting is almost every single one of these instruments are signature guitars of some sort. And I'm guessing whoever did this is not necessarily a musician, and that's why it's allegedly played by famous musicians. No, these are just signature guitars. So I thought it would be fun to see if they were actually right with this absurd suggested retail price of, you know, $160,000 US. My big question is, why even put that in the article? It makes absolutely no sense. These are fake guitars. They're worth about $300 to $400 a piece. I don't endorse buying counterfeits, but if you're going to get one, at least get it without the Gibson branding on it because you might know it's fake. But if you pass away and your family comes in and goes, oh, wow, this is a real Gibson. They're going to sell it as a real thing. Maybe you get into legal troubles. I've actually just ran into that very recently in private help sessions. I had a family come to me. They're like, hey, can you appraise these guitars for me? And it's like, I'm sorry, they're like all fake. Now, there were a few good real ones in there. <laughs> it's just kind of a, a sticky situation. I always like how uh, Philip McKnight, uh, he, he brands the fake guitars that he ever works on as fake. So people will know. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive into this. So first off, we have a couple of slash appetite for destruction Les Pauls. How many? One, two, three, and four. I think we can count it as four. Now, if we really zoom in here, there is a difference between these. This is a knockoff of the Gibson USA version, whereas this is a counterfeit of the Custom Shop Edition. Let's just assume there's two of each in this lot because we can't see the headstocks of the other ones. This looks like it would be the other USA because it's got it on the case. And this is not the newest version. This is the old one. The original Appetite Les Pauls are actually very, very popular. So popular, it looks like even the Epiphone version can sell for some pretty crazy money. However, I'll go pretty conservatively here and say that they're both worth about 4,500 bucks if they were real. However, as far as the aged and signed, if that's what they were going for and not like the VOS, I mean, people are asking 28,000, 34,000, 50,000. This seems like crazy numbers. I can't actually find any particularly sold listings. So let's just do a really conservative 15,000. The next one I see looks like a Jim Root Telecaster to me. You can just barely make out the EMG pickups and the white. You can still buy these things brand new. They're 1,400. But I want to do all this on the used market because sometimes things are worth more than they are brand new. So let's say a conservative $1,000 on that one. Next up, what is this SG? I don't think this actually exists. I mean, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but what that is based off of is the Gibson Scorpion series. It was a limited edition done in 2018. They did a whole bunch of different colors. I would love to get one of these one day because they're kind of like the Super 400 Les Paul Customs where they get the Super 400 inlays. And then pretty much the only other special thing about it is you get a different colored stripe up here. Yellow's not necessarily my favorite, but some people might like it. But you get the kind of the racing stripe type thing. It's meant to look like these scorpion lines. So since that guitar doesn't really exist, we can only estimate. I would guess brand new, it'd be anywhere between 5,500 to 6,000. So that puts it in the used market, probably around 4,000. That leads us next to this one. I'm not quite sure what that one's going after. I don't know if they're trying to go after like the first sunburst Les Paul. 
But I don't think that's true because it looks like it has a wrap tail piece. So this can just be billed as a typical R4 in a less than normal finish, not necessarily an artist's signature guitar. Or it's just one I'm not familiar of or thinking of right now. Assuming they're going off of like an early 2000s one, those aren't quite as desirable. We'll give that one a $2,800 evaluation. Next up, we have the Zach Wild. Looks like the Flying V to me if you go to the headstock. I don't think his Les Paul has that kind of a headstock. Zach Wild fakes are all over the place. If you're ever buying a Zach Wild guitar, look for the certificate of authenticity. If they've lost it, look to an expert for help because some of the fakes, they can be pretty good. We're not talking the overseas replicas. Those are, you know, if you know your stuff, you can usually see them. But we're talking like a actual fakes where people take like a Bernie or some other lawsuit era guitar that looks pretty correct, like an Orville by Gibson, then they refinish it and make it look like a real Gibson. Those are the real tough ones. And these things are quite expensive. So used today, we have one at 6,500 bucks and one at 85. Recent sales show us anywhere between about four to five is about what you're going to regularly see. So let's just call it an even 4,500 bucks. What makes these things interesting is A, they have a four control layout, a Floyd Rose, your toggle switch is in a strange location, but that's the way Zach likes it. We kind of saw that on the SGV as well. I mean, this is a really cool 50 style flying V, except for you don't have the string through and it's a <laughs> Floyd Rose. It seems so strange, but, but at the same time, it's like blending a flying V custom in with a more vintage look. So these things are actually pretty cool. And now this to me looks like a PRS dragon. You can just barely make out the dragon right there. And if you know nothing about those, we're talking five figures. I mean, here's a couple that have been selling brand new for like 18, there's a 19, there's a 16 and a half. But remember, I mean, these aren't really particularly fantastic dragons in my opinion. So just typing in here, PRS green dragon. This is how people find this stuff. The whole reason that they're posting this article is to hope that people don't actually buy these when they see this. Yeah, so here's a dragon that looks kind of similar. Basically, the way that these dragons go is Paul always wanted a guitar with a dragon on it, so that kind of birthed the dragon series. Sometimes it's on the neck, sometimes it's on the body. I particularly like the ones that kind of encapsulate both, except for this one. I I'm not a big fan of that one. You just have this big nose on your fretboard. But something like this, that is pure artwork. I might not necessarily love playing a double neck, but if there is a dueling dragon to know about, it would be something like that. I've got other fish to fry, so let's just call it 15,000. Next up here, we have a Hendrix Monterey Jack Stratocaster. At least that's what I call it in my head. I'll be honest, I don't know the story on this one. I just know the design. People are kind of going crazy on the prices of these. I'm gonna use the like lowest on this one though. Cause it was just a made in Mexico run. Looks like they discontinued it around 2018 if we can believe reverb specs here. So we'll call it 15. And oh my goodness, there is one left-handed guitar just all the way back there. They didn't want you to notice it. That's the first time I've seen that. I can't quite make out if that's trying to be a 1954 with a wrap tail like this one, or it's actually trying to be a 52. That almost looks like it. Let's, let, let's bill that as a 52 and we'll call it a real 52. Well, should we bill it as a real 52? I mean, that, that'd be $15,000 or so. Yeah, we'll just do that. I mean, as a reissue, it would be like 3000 ish. They don't do many R2s though. That one I kind of feel bad for. Lefties just can't get nice guitars. Now, what I found most interesting is the Fraley Les Paul right here is the one that the article claims is the most expensive out of this whole bunch. Clearly, it's probably the Dragon so far or the aged and signed Appetite for Destruction, but they were also going off of manufacturer's pricing. And it's kind of hard to see if they're going for like aged and signed, which, you know, some people asking 25 don't know if they're getting that but you can also find like a nice one like this which is i believe what this one was trying to go after it's got his face on it but i do love the case purple interior ace fraley awesome let's call it a nice six we we'll be generous 
It's interesting that they value it at 9,000, but that's a, a retail price. I'm guessing that's the over exaggerated one that they'll never get. And then there's the one that's actually at the store. Moving on here, looks like a J200. I can't say I know too much about the market on those. I'll just write down 35. We'll come back to this guy. Now this was kind of cool to see. I have no idea what that guitar is. Did they ever make a 295 T? I'm, I'm not familiar with that. I'm guessing what that is, is the manufacturers have never actually seen a ES-295 in person. Yeah, I'm not seeing a 295T, but they have done a 175T in the 70s, at least. Yeah, 1976 to 79. I remember the first time I saw one of these, it's like, what? I didn't know they did that. So let's say it's a converted one of these guys because T stands for thin line. And if it's been worked on, we're gonna be about what, 3000 bucks. You know, that's kind of a interesting idea for like the made to measure program. <laughs> but as a signature model, they're going after the Scotty Moore vibe. It doesn't have his exact setup, but I'm betting that's what they were trying to do. Now this freaky thing is actually the Alvin Lee signature and they just recently reissued that again. It looks like today we could buy one for about $6,000. I'm hoping that one day I can just pick one of these things up at a good price so we can do the full review and documentation because with having multiple runs of them, in theory, we should be able to get one. And then we got a couple of Blueberry Burst 335s and then that one is a Les Paul Custom of some sort. So we'll just give them general $3,000 used on the Customs. And I'll give it the same to the figured blueberries. I mean, brand new, they would be a bit more than that, though. I just know this video is getting pretty long. The strats, I don't really know enough to say anything. So we'll just call them like a thousand bucks each, even though they're likely some sort of like a custom shoppery issue <laughs> instead of the USA stuff. Editor's note, I couldn't see it till I zoomed in. The black one's actually a Richie Sambora signature. That thing's kind of cool. Well, I think we'll do the same on the telly and I'll write down 25 on that one. So that moves us here. Is this a blue widow? No, this is actually a centipede burst. You can tell because you got the different colors on the headstock. These things are kind of cool. It's like a blue widow, except for traditionally they get the yellow binding and some of them have really interesting color variations in the hue. But besides the red colored headstock logos right there, the coolest feature has to be the centipede on the back of the headstock. That's definitely another one I want to get one day. So we'll write roughly 4,500, but I think brand new those were like 8,000 or something crazy. This just looks like a standard black beauty. Oh, is that a knob right there? It might be. And since we're doing signature guitars, let's go ahead and say that's a, a Mickey Baker Les Paul. These things are cool. They're so strange having three knobs in a row like that, but it allows you to get all the tonal possibilities here. Imagine if you put split coils on each of those. We'll call that a cool 5,000 bucks. Sometimes those are more expensive than that. It just depends how many are ever on the market and they did not make many of them. And we're starting to get towards the end. So these are two Angus Young signature SGs. They're pretty much replicas of each other. Lately, those things have been going up in value. My kind of uh, relatively beat up one sold for 2,500 really fast, but people have been selling them for about 35 now. So we'll call those both 3250s. And then it looks like we have some sort of a, a generic R9. I'm sure it's some sort of a signature, but we'll write down 4,000 bucks. So that leaves the Stevie Ray Vaughn. I mean, I guess we could say it's probably going after the Brazilian Rosewood fretboard version, which, wow, somebody only wants 24. That doesn't seem right. Let's just call it a cool 3000 bucks. And that just leaves whatever this is and some Martin. I'm guessing that Martin is probably a pretty high end one. I, I really can't make out the inlays and I'm really not even sure what that is. So we'll just say 5000 bucks there. So what is our grand total here? We got about $150,000. What did they say? Nice. <laughs> they actually did pretty good job doing that. I'm impressed. I thought that was just all arbitrary numbers, but that actually does reflect what I know based on the used market for these particular ones. Oh, and now I'm seeing a different photo here. It looks like we missed a Les Paul Custom. I missed one Martin here. Looks like another R4. 
and a limed mahogany Les Paul Jr. Yeah, that would have added up to about, you know, 10 to 15,000. So yeah, their values are spot on. That is fascinating. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed going through all of these and figuring out what they were and how much they would be worth if they were real. And if you learn nothing else about this, please do not order these fake guitars because in this situation, when they do get seized, you're out your money and you're out the guitar. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.